Hey there, once again, finger style comrades, and this is Patrick Woods once again back with another video here. And this is another boring talking video, but the subject matter is not boring. Uh, I was involved in something recently that I contributed to, and I, I found out about it just like, you know, two or three weeks ago. And uh, this actually is a thing where they are, I just want to take a just a brief moment to tell about this. They are making an actual movie, documentary, about the late, great Michael Hedges. And I don't think I've talked about Michael Hedges in length yet here anywhere on my channel, so I shall do so now. It's one of my favorite subjects to talk about. Um, I, I, I'm just assuming that most of, most of you, as viewers of my channel, uh, know who Michael Hedges was. Um, but for those of you who don't, or that know very little at least, just, just, just a brief summary, Michael Hedges was like the Jimi Hendrix of acoustic guitar. And that's no joke. That's not an exaggeration. He really was. He was what Jaco Pastorius was to the bass, or what Jimi Hendrix was to the electric guitar, or what Eddie Van Halen was to the electric guitar in later decades. You know, or what Neil Peart was to the drums, or John Bonham was to the drums. Michael Hedges fits that category when we're talking about modern acoustic. Now, his style obviously had nothing to do with the more traditional finger picking like Chet Atkins and Jerry Reed and Merle Travis and guys like that. No, Michael Hedges invented all the modern um, acoustic techniques that you see today on acoustic guitar, like what Andy McKee does, John, John, what John Gaum does, um, basically any of us that do any kind of modern technique with the more percussive sounding or it doesn't even have to be percussive anything with excuse me anything with you know additional harmonics um kind of more of a modern laid-back approach to guitar more chordal melodies that kind of thing all that stuff comes from michael hedges and i'm not saying that he invented all that stuff but he sure as hell made it into his own and he made it into a tapestry that is available to us today. I mean, there's no finger, modern fingerstyle guitarist uh, without Michael Hedges' influence. You know, he influenced Preston Reed, Don Ross, maybe not Don Ross so much. Don Ross was probably more influenced by funk, but still there's a little of that in there, I think, with Don Ross's playing. And, you know, just about any, mo you know, Eric Mongrain, uh, Antoine Dufour, the list goes on and on. But, you know, as, as far as Michael Hedges is concerned and his legacy, recently there was, I found out about um, just a couple weeks ago that you could uh, contribute funds, funding towards Michael, Michael Hedges' documentary. It's being made by his uh, brother, uh, Brendan, and his son, Misha. And they were all, uh, they were kind of doing a crowdfunding thing for this documentary. And the good news is they actually have the green light. So before I knew that, I contributed a little bit of money to the project. I was very excited about it. And this is, this is just a super exciting thing for fingerstyle guitar players everywhere. Or, uh, you know, just people in general who love guitar music or love composition or love songwriting. Michael was all of that. And I think people get too caught up in the Aerial Boundaries album, even though, let's face it, let's, <laughs> that's my favorite album as well. In fact, uh, I've got it right over here. Now let me, just, let me just get it for a second. Just stay there, stay with me. I'm going to grab this album for a second. Okay, here we are right here. This is what Aerial Boundaries looks like. It was uh, the second album he made for Wyndham Hill. And this is actually uh, the last album he made called Torched. And evidently there are things on this album that he didn't even finish. They just kind of put it on here um, just after he died. You know, even on even if the songs were... The songs don't sound unfinished to me, but evidently in the liner notes they say that they were. This is an incredible album. So this kind of gives you an idea as to where he was going or where he was... here where he was headed with his music um, when you get this album. But Aerial Boundaries is like, you know, the number one Quisential Michael Hedges album. That's where you should start, obviously, because that was like the groundbreaking uh, album for uh, a modern fingerstyle guitar. 
and then from that he went on to do, to do all kinds of things. He made you know singer songwriter albums where he Michael was a great singer and a great songwriter. Some people might uh, you know some people don't like his vocal music, but I, I really did. I thought he was a great songwriter. And, uh, and he, he also did a lot of cover songs in his live performances. He, he could just do anything, at, at, it seemed like, at, at the touch of a button, you know. And, um, you know, he would, do, he would play flute on a lot of his later albums. Uh, there was percussion on it. Uh, he had all kinds of stuff. He was just an all-around composer. And I think that's what people kind of get wrong about him. They always think about the, the tapping and songs like Rick Over's Dream or Ragmuffin or Aerial Boundaries and they all they forget that that was only one part of him. He had many different sides to him, many different facets. Singer songwriter. Um he played a lot with a pick as as just as much as he did with his fingers. You know, he wasn't a one trick pony. He did all kinds of stuff. And, you know, some people liked his other stuff and other people didn't. But uh obviously the finger style stuff is my favorite, but he had the, it didn't matter what he played because he always had this tone, this incredible tone going through his Martin guitar. And I heard that he was kind of an electronic music major. He majored in electronics or electronic music. So he had these, uh, he wired his cables a certain way where he would get a certain sound. And you could not duplicate it. Nobody could duplicate it. Hundred, I think you could get close, like maybe 98, 99%, but maybe not 100%. But uh, I have never, there's some pretty darn good guitar players who have covered Aerial Boundaries and covered Hedges' tunes, but I've never heard anyone nail it 100%. That was, that is a question of feel, right? It's, it's, uh, it's one of those, um, it's one of those concepts where uh, you you can teach somebody to play anything, right? You can you can pick up a guitar and you can learn to play fast. You can learn to play scales. You can learn to play arpeggios. You can learn to compose pretty good, and you can you can learn the rhythmic guitar tapping all you want, but you can't learn feel. I think you can't. He, Michael was one of those players who had this certain feel, every every single note, uh, and every 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 time he touched the guitar, he just had this feel his tone and it could it just cannot be completely duplicated and that's how you know that's a great artist that is an incredible once in a generation artist who can who can duplicate those sounds through one instrument and his his legacy is really incredible it's a shame it's a tragedy that he died in a car accident back in the uh mid 90s um that was when i was still in high school that was before i even knew who he was a friend of mine introduced me when I was to Hedges' music, and when I was about 18 years old, and I'll never forget the first time I heard it, it was mind-blowing, and it was like, man, I could never do that. And But little by little, that's how I got it to playing acoustic, was by hearing hearing Michael Hedges and Preston Reed. Those are the first two um, modern fingerstyle players I heard. So, um, you know, a, a lot of credit goes to those guys, and especially, you know, Michael Hedges. Um, even even as great as Preston Reed is, uh, he still doesn't have as far. He's he's a completely different style than Michael Hedges. He's a, a different kind of tone, you know, a different kind of feel. Michael has his own feel. Had his own feel. He was all about feeling. Um, when he hit the stage, he completely abandoned any thought of any anything methodical or, or anything too. Um, too rigid, you know, or any technique. He just completely abandoned all that and he just played, just from his heart, every time. And that's what made him so special. And that's why his passing was the the shock of that is still being felt. You know, it's uh, to lose somebody like that. And from what I hear from the uh, from the uh, the things that people have told me about Michael, he was the nicest guy. Like I haven't heard one bad thing where he was rude or. He was mean to anyone. He was just a really great guy, a really cool guy. Uh, he that he would he was approachable. You know, he would he would be approachable. He was probably a shy guy, as am I. But you know, he pushed buttons when people would approach him, and uh, he would talk to him. You know, he he wasn't he wouldn't try to you know hoard himself away after a show or anything like that. From what I understand, he was that kind of person, and that's people loved him all the more for it. And uh, 
so that's that's basically a summary of, of Michael Hedges and I can't wait for this documentary to come out I don't know when it's coming out for sure uh, probably in the next year sometime I, I think they'll probably notify me but um, you can still contribute to it seed and spark I think is the site seed and spark or just Google you know Michael Hedges documentary project and all this stuff will come different links will come up and it'll lead you right to it but uh, aside from that I just wanted to, to, to give a little shout out about that and my next video I'll be playing guitar again be playing more some more guitars it's about time for some more music don't you think I think so we'll see you